All right, so after you do your Cordova release, Cordova build Android release, it should then process, give you a build successful, and it'll tell you, it'll remind you that inside your project folder, platforms, Android, build, outputs, APK, you get android-release.apk. So let's go into that folder that it's telling us. Here, here's my project folder. I'm still in the Android folder where I, where I dropped in the release signing properties and my JKS file. Okay, we don't need the JKS file to be in that project anymore. That's like leaving the keys in the car because we could, you know, if we put this, if we uploaded this project somewhere and we left the, our, our developer file in there, someone could use it to create apps in our name. Now, they'd have to know our password, but better safe than sorry. So all we really need to do is just remove that JKS file out of, you know, move that JKS file out of this folder. We will have to put it back in again every time we do Cordova build Android release because it's going to be waiting, it's going to be looking for a JKS file. So I'm assuming my app is done. I don't want to leave the keys in it, so I'm going to move it out. But again, make a note and keep in mind, if we want to build a release, another release, we have to put the JKS file back in. This project properties we can leave alone, but we need to put the JKS file back. Yes? A couple of reasons could have failed. One could be that when it's asking for the password, you typed your password in wrong. What could have also happened is, I believe it gives you like five seconds to put your password. You might have taken a little too long. What could have also happened is that this J is that this properties file is pointing to a file name that is named wrong. I have victor.jks, but in here I might have pointed it to victorapps.jks. So we'll look at that those possible failures in a bit, but those are some of the big ones. Re the, the files are named wrong, you put your password wrong, you waited too long to put your password. Some possibilities there. Is yeah. still working? Is mine still working? Uh, yes. Well, what part of it? What part of it doesn't work? Like adding classes and stuff like that. You are testing it on your virtual device? No, uh, testing uh try to test it on my device. I try to test it on uh put you know, just doing a run. That has me concerned. Let me double check mine. Yeah, just, just to confirm it. <laughs> yeah. As it's loading up here, uh but let me finish my thoughts. So I'm gonna assume it works, uh, but I'm gonna double check it right now. I got the build I got the build success and so forth, and what the output was telling me then was inside of this folder where I had the release signing properties and the JKS file, we're going to go into the build folder, the outputs folder, the APK folder, and that android-release.apk, that's the final version of your project. So inside of that folder, oops, inside of that folder, it's where it creates that .apk file, uh, which we would then take over to the to the App Store. Let me just run this one more time because I, I had the folder open and it probably confused. I'm going to close my files also. And it has happened where something like this happens that the project doesn't work and then I run it again and then it works. Key store file does not exist. Oh, because duh, I took out my key store. It's giving me a build. Yeah, you see a lot of stuff here. You, there are parts that do make sense that tell you what went wrong. So if you get a build fail, look through it, there will be something. Key store file not does not exist. Obviously, it's on my desktop. So we'll put it back. Try that again. So 
So sometimes these errors do seem very, very, very esoteric. What does Gradle CDV build debug mean? I don't know, but some places, if you do look, it might actually tell you what went wrong. So that's what I saw on mine. I've removed my JKS file. I'm just going to put it back to confirm. Even if it doesn't work, I'm still going to proceed because, again, we could be spending lots of time on figuring out these little details. In theory, it all works. Um, I've taught this class a few years now. It works. There's always little kinks here and there, but it works. And this is the, this is the thing about being a developer sometimes. There's little things that just get in the way, and then we figure it out, and it works. And sometimes, really, and it's so weird, I just do it again. I didn't change anything. I just build it again, and then it works. I don't know what good luck or bad luck I might have had at a particular moment, but uh, then it works. And as I said, I've tried this. I've taught this several times with lots and lots of students. I've also done this on lots and lots of computers, and it works. So my app launched. I can go to the class yet working. So sometimes what happens is that we have the um, we have these conflicts. We have these conflicts in the device that we were developing a particular version of it, and then we, we made a slightly different version, so then that might conflict. So one thing that you can also do is delete manually from the device, delete all versions of the app, try it again, and then it'll probably, probably work. So yeah, I've got some classes that show up right there. So I'm going to go on again. If it doesn't quite work for you, we'll have lab time, but I need to go on. So in inside of the folder, the point of going into the build folder, output folder, APK folder, we have that release.apk. If you don't have it, again, we'll figure it out later. But that Android release APK file, I'm going to copy it and paste it to my desktop. We did this. We did this last time, so this is a reminder. That's your APK file, Android package. That's the final version of your project. Uh, this is optional, but I'm going to rename the file so that it is called my SDCE1. It's the name of my project, and this is version one dash release. So I can tell at a glance here that this is the final release version of my project. What's that? It's just inside of Android. Inside of platform, inside of Android, you'll see the JKS file. Okay. Next question. Um, the release, the signing, the The only thing that's in this is to say what's the name of your key store and your alias. It doesn't list any passwords because you have to type your own password. But it's information. Yeah, so that is a little bit more secure if you think about it. If you also remove that one, you know, if you remove both of these then that definitely removes your key, and that removes any mention of your key. Yeah. Sure. But the, you're just going to leave the, the other one there, and you just remove one? Ideally, I would be moving them both out, yes. That would be more secure. So because we're still working on this as a testing project and such, we can leave it. But yes, we, 
in the future. The release signing file and the JKS file are two files that you need to make your final version of your app. So if you move them both out of the project, then you'll be safer, because then there's no mention of your keys and such in the project. Okay, so um, I've got that on the desktop. Uh, let's open the web browser. I'm going to close a couple of things here. We don't need Notepad anymore. I don't need my emulator. Let's open our web browser. So there's basically two avenues to distribute our app. There's the official ways and the unofficial ways. The official ways would be Google Play so it's play.google.com Google Play, which is the main app store, it used to be called uh, the Google Marketplace, I think, uh, or something like that. It's Google Play now, where, you, where people can get their apps and movies and music and games. And most Android devices that come out have that Play Store built in, right on the desktop of my device. It says right there, Play Store. So there's there's the App Store for Android. Uh, iTunes, I mean, iPhone has an App Store. Windows has an App Store. They've all got an App Store. The Google One, the, the official Google One is called Play, the Google Play Store. So this is one of the places where we could publish our apps, games, um, you know, any kind of app. The other official place is Amazon. Amazon, where you can get books and videos and uh, toilet paper and everything. You can also get apps because there's a department. Shop by department. App Store. So there's a department of App Store for Android. Both of these places are viable are viable places to sell your apps uh, or give them away from you know ninety nine cents up to uh, from down to zero up to ninety nine cents and up. Uh, and so both of these places you can sell your apps. Now most Android devices have the Play Store built in. Most Android devices don't have the Amazon App Store built in. They're somewhat competing app stores. However, if you get one of the Amazon branded devices, the Amazon Android devices have the App Store, the Amazon App Store built in. So those include all of those hundreds of millions of Kindles, and the Fire Tablets, and the Fire Phone, and the Amazon Stick that you plug into your TV. So a plain old Android device is going to have Google Play built in, and an Amazon device is going to have Amazon App Store built in. But you can get apps from either store. We're going to spend time in uh, to create the Amazon version of the developer account because the Google Play one will ask you to pay to create a developer account. Even if you're going to give your apps away for free, you still have to pay to become a Google developer. That's different than our key store. This is to have an account here because I'm seeing here this app, for example, Heyday and they're the developer Supercell. 
Over here, Gummy Drop. They're the developer of Big Fish Games. Fantasy War Tactics from Nexon Company. Well, to have your own listing of your apps and your own developer profile, like Supercell, if I click there, they've got their own graphics and text, and here's our here's our games and everything. To be able to sell through Google Play, I believe it's $28 one-time fee. Um, and then you have your own space on, on Google, and you start selling your apps. I'm not going to ask us at this point to fork over $28, not so much, but I'm not going to ask us to do it. We're going to instead create the Amazon account, because this one is free. This one is completely free to set up. We'll go through the screens together. We'll see on a give advice here and there on what to do. And we'll then have an Amazon account where we can actually uh, publish our apps. And then on your own, you can go in and create a Google Play developer account uh, on your own. And you'll see that it's not that complicated, but it will require you to pay the, um, the, pay the developer's fee. Both of these stores are the official ways. The unofficial way is you've got this APK file, your project, that's your app right there. What's to stop you from publishing it through email or to make your own website and put it on your own website? Um, because when you sell through these stores, they're going to take a cut. They're going to take 30%. So if you're selling a 99 cent app, if you're selling an app that's a dollar, you're going to get 70 cents out of it. Amazon and Google keep 30% because it takes money to keep the lights on. To have these app, these app stores running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on 200 countries in the world. So every time you sell your dollar app, you're going to get 70 cents out of it. Yes? Yes. So that's the other way. That's the unofficial way. I'm going to create victorapps.com and I'm going to have a Facebook account and promote it there and a Twitter account and uh, Pinterest and whatever. I'm going to get on social media. I'm going to, prevent, I'm going to uh, promote my account for people to go to victorapps.com. Here's the big problem with doing it the unofficial way. You have to also have instructions on your website to tell people, go to your settings screen and turn on developer options. Because there's an option, remember, in our developer options that say load third party apps. So that's a big hurdle. People are going to think, why are you making me change my settings? And why did this pop up appear that says warning apps could take over your, your device? You're gonna, you're, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna convince most people. Change your settings to get my app. So, if you're tech minded and you're selling to a tech audience, you might be okay. But for everyone else, you know, none of you probably knew how to turn on those developer options until this class. And you know the reason why to do it to upload your app directly to your device. But to convince people, especially people paying a whole 99 cents, turn on my settings, developer options, what? You're not going to convince them. So the unofficial, rate, unofficial way is not, that, is not that realistic for us to do. We're going to have to go with one of the established app stores, keeping in mind that they're going to take 30%, but then there's no special thing that they do. You just, they just search for your app, click download, it's there. They don't have to do any of those developer settings. The good thing about Amazon, at least, is they're, not, they're going to charge you at all to create an account at Google Play Will even if you're selling free apps. In contrast with the, uh, with the uh, iTunes store, if you want to get on iTunes, it's also a fee for free or for pay apps. I believe it's $99 per year. So every year that you want to publish your apps on, um, on the app store of... Uh, of, of the iPhone, it's 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 ninety nine dollars or so. They might have changed the price, but let's say ninety nine dollars, and um, that could be expensive. You know, if, especially if you're giving away your apps, you're losing money every time you're giving away. You might have a thousand downloads, but they're all zero dollars, and you have to keep paying ninety nine dollars every year to keep it running. 
and then the Windows App Store. I believe there's just about also $28, 25 dollars one-time fee. So the uh, the uh, iTunes App Store really is the ex is the expensive one. And what we've developed in this class, we've been focusing on it as an Android app. But as I said all along, we're creating this project with Cordova, which then, in theory, we have the ability to do Cordova build iOS, and we get the iPhone version. That requires that we have the whole iOS SDK and all of that stuff, which we don't have, so it won't work. But we, in theory, could have Cordova build Windows, and the same code that we wrote will become a Windows app. So I can sell my app on the Android store, the iPhone store, the Windows store, and cover all the bases. This is not going to work if we try it. We don't have the software installed, but in theory, that'll work. Because that's not complicated, but a lot of effort, we also have something called um, See what's it called? Build.phonegap.com. Yes, uh, build.phonegap.com. This is this is Adobe's version of Cordova. All of the code that we wrote and such, it's 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 the same thing here. You're going to see very similar things about the plugins and the docs and such. The big thing about this is we can give build our code and they will convert it into all the platforms. We've been doing it the way, the, mo the, the hardest way, which is that we're writing all the code ourselves and doing Cordova build and all of that. But with Adobe Cordova, with Adobe PhoneGap build, they'll do it for you. Not for free, unsurprisingly. You're going to provide them their code, we compile it to all the platforms. Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, Blackberry, etc., etc., etc. But it's not free. Um, to really get to really to really be serious, because okay, there is one free version, but you're probably not going to only build one app in your life. The paid plans you can build 25 apps, and you've got all of these settings and so forth, and. Here's the prices, $9.99 per month to develop your app and have Adobe then build it, package it to all the, to all the devices. So you might want to explore the completely free version, but the concept basically is you've built your app, it's ready, now you upload it to Adobe Build, and they'll build it for iPhone, for Windows Phone, for Android, etc. You still have to publish it to the stores. I believe, but they will they will have all the software to con to create the project, which is convenient. But it is ten dollars a month. What does that mean? Ten dollars a month? What if you stop paying them? And your app, the apps they build are still are functional. Right? Yes, it's still functional. It's still out to the world. But then, when you want to publish version two of it, you pay it again. You pay it again. Not high. No, a hundred. Um, that's you know. probably the first year, and the second year is up to thirty dollars. It is. It is Adobe, so you never know. But yeah, ten dollars a month. Maybe next year is thirty dollars a month. Yeah. I don't know. But I never do this. Honestly, I've never done this. I do it the hard way. I subscribe. You did subscribe to them? Yeah, with the Adobe CC. Yeah, yeah it starts off really affordably, and then it's thirty dollars a month. Now, I don't know about this. If you're already buying Adobe Creative Cloud, maybe you get it for free. Maybe. Again, I don't know enough about this to speak a lot about it. I just know that this is a service that Adobe has for you to write your, your, your main app, and then they'll convert it to all the platforms. Because as I also said, if you're going to create an, if you're going to create an iPhone app, yeah, we, we have the ability, Cordova, but you need the iPhone SDK. We've been using the Android SDK. That 800 megabyte file is just for the Android SDK, the Android code. We would then need the iPhone SDK for the to build to do Cordova build iOS. The big problem with that is that the iPhone SDK only works on a Mac. We don't have Macs here. 
and we can't do it. We could do Cordova build windows. We could do that on these computers, because these are Windows computers, but we need to download that SDK, which is another gigabyte of data. We let Adobe do it for us, they'll do it all. $10 a month, which might be good for the first time, or might add up. If you're selling your app 99 cents at a time, maybe you'll, you'll recuperate that, but be it advice that it is cost of entry. That's not, and that's not including the cost of selling, getting the developer account at Google, the developer account at iTunes, and the developer account at Windows Store. So we're doing it the most free way possible. Therefore, let's take a moment to create an Amazon account. We have an Android app to publish, and we'll publish it via Amazon, because this is the most free version. Let's go to the website developer dot android dot com developer dot android dot com wait a minute developer dot amazon dot com sorry amazon if you wanted to go to the google Play Store, you would go to developer.android.com and it says developers console. But we are going to developer.amazon.com. Sorry. Developer.amazon.com. And I see they're going to have a developer summit at the end of the month. And it's probably only about $2,000 per ticket. So go to developer.amazon.com Amazon, a lot, most of us think about it in terms of uh, you know, a commerce site where you buy stuff. But Amazon actually is a big player in the world of technology. They have something known as the Amazon Web Services, AWS which is basically cloud, uh, cloud storage for apps and such. So if we were to take the next step of making our database synchronize with a server, we would need to get into this, and that's not free either. To have your own server to save your data to a database, that's not free. And so Amazon provides that. Amazon has their Fire phones and their Fire TV and all of that stuff so you can stream content. Well, you can also put your apps on those Fire devices. And you can create apps for PC, uh, games for PC and Mac. But what we want is the Amazon App Store, which allows you to distribute your apps and sell your Android and HTML5 apps to millions of customers in, over, in, over, in nearly 200 countries in the world. What this will also allow us to do is set up a system of in-app purchasing and mobile ads. Um, these two are ways that you can also make money off of your app. You may, not, you may not sell your app, you may give it away for zero dollars, but you can include mobile ads. You've probably seen that in apps in many apps. You have, a, you have an app and you run it and then a little ad appears. Uh, developers make money off of that. If, if you click on that ad, the developer gets some money. Um, does anyone remember that game, Flappy Bird, from a year or two ago? Uh, that highly addictive game that people loved. From what I heard, that developer was making like $20,000 a day off of that app. A very, very, very frustrating app. People were, he was making money off of that lot. That was through mobile ads. Because these ads would appear in the app, people would click, you would get money. You also have in-app purchasing. Let's say we had created a game. What's very popular with games is paying these microtransactions to get extra stuff. Okay, my little warrior is very powerful, but if I pay 99 cents, I can get some better armor. Or, you know, I keep getting lost. If I buy the map for 99 cents, I won't get lost. So that's very, very, very common for games. For other kinds of apps, we can do something similar. Let's say we developed an app that you know is like a language conversion app. 
and you get you know five languages built in English to Japanese to Spanish blah 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 let's say we wanted English to Russian we could then have an in-app purchase 99 cents so even though your app is free you can have these extra features for people to pay a little bit at a time microtransactions and that's another way to make money off your apps obviously we don't have time to get to it but the Amazon developer portal here will give you all the instructions of how to set this up game circle mobile associates I don't know what that is but um, okay great let's say let's create an account click on Amazon App Store introducing merch oh, this is new it looks like here's another way to generate money off of your apps you, you apparently can make t-shirts and stuff off of your apps and then people buy the t-shirt interesting generate revenue through the sale of custom branded t-shirts in game huh. so you develop a game and then you pass the level and it says don't forget to buy your t-shirt and you click there and you buy a t-shirt they're really stepping up their game So this screen is going to show you all the developer stuff. Uh, we're going to develop, uh, we're going to register, talking about monetization, submitting your app, all of that. They changed this recently. Uh, looks nice. It's got more more stuff. It's got free app testing service. So we don't need to do this, but basically it's saying 85% of Android apps submitted automatically work. It takes 90 seconds. Uh, don't worry about that. Our apps do work. Uh, but here on the mobile app services, let's click register now. Here then, uh, you have a decision. How many of you currently have an Amazon account? Raise your hand. Most people. You've probably bought something from Amazon. It's been around 20 years. Um, you can either use your existing Amazon login information or you can create a brand new account. It's up to you. Uh, again, if you're doing this for real, uh, if you want to change this later, you can. But if you're just doing this to learn it and such, you can make one up here. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make up an account. I'm gonna say I'm a new customer. I'm I'm gonna make it up. I don't have Victor at VictorC.com. It that's not even a real email. I don't have it. We can create an account here just to just to see how it all works, and then you can delete it later. Or you can create a real account. And I'm going to say I'm a new customer. If you'd like to use your existing Amazon credentials, fine. But I would recommend you keep those separate. You use one Amazon account as a developer, as a seller, and you use an, your, your other account as a consumer. But it is optional. Click sign in. new to Amazon register now so then you can make this all up but I'm gonna put my name create a password so I'm creating a brand new account as a developer so I can publish my apps Create account. It's not going to be complicated, but I'm going to point out a few things here and there as we create our account. If you got to the screen, you'll see registration and you'll see three tabs profile info, app distribution agreement, and payments. What what's your main country or region? It knows US if you're gonna be from another country, you can change that. First name, last name, phone number. Again, you're going to be a legitimate developer. So you would want a phone number right there. Uh, I'm going to just make this up at the moment. Phone number. 
fax number in case you get any customers from 1986. Developer name or company name. Okay. Earlier on our config XML file, remember, we, uh, we invented an app company name. Uh, so you might as well use that name here or make it up again. Again, doesn't matter. So I've got Victor Apps, or what did I call mine? Doesn't matter. Victor Apps um, LLC. This is optional here, but re but I would recommend it. Developer description, maximum 4,000 characters. So when we get to, to talk to this, when we get to talking about this concept a little later, uh, the concept is marketing, advertising. You might have built the best app ever, amazingly designed, highly functional, but if no one knows about it, to download it, what's the point of your app? So you need to be you need to be found. Developer description aids in your discoverability because when people search on Google or Bing or Yahoo or Amazon, and your developer description here, for example, has certain keywords of what people might be searching for in an app, you could be found. So I'm going to right here San Diego based app developers specializing in educational apps or software so in this case with this particular app that applies maybe uh, me as this developer that's what I'm focusing on that's what I wrote here I'm gonna focus on creating apps for educational software apps for schools apps for kindergartens whatever my company is about making apps for that niche for that uh, topic you can change this whenever you want of course you got 4,000 characters to write but you need to think about it in terms of marketing um, I teach this series of classes, but I also teach a bunch of other classes regarding social media, search engine optimization, web design, WordPress, etc. And I can tell you, in those classes, you know, we create websites and such. In those classes, I tell them the same thing. You might have designed the greatest website, but no one knows about it. No one can find it. That's the whole art and science and magic of SEO, search engine optimization. And that is creating content and descriptions and such to get found. Take my SEO class, I'll tell you when it's being offered at the end of the day, but take my SEO class and we go much more into detail. The main concept is you're going to be writing text, thinking in terms of how can I be found? Are people going to search for, the, for these concepts, these keywords, these topics? And so here I'm saying San Diego based developer education. So these are some keywords that people could be searching for. Address. Here you have two options. You can put in your real address. Or I would recommend if you're really going to get serious about being a developer and such, you can get a PO box. PO box, one, two, three, San Diego, etc. Again, for our testing purposes, it's okay to completely make this up. But if you're eventually going to be a real developer, you have to decide to put your real address or not. You can put a P.O. box. And I don't know if all post offices do this at the moment, but I know mine, my local one, does this down in East Lake. My local post office, because sometimes do you ever want to buy something online and it says P.O. Box is not accepted? My local P.O. Box lets you actually put the address of the post office. And then the, the address number two is my box number. I don't know if all post I don't know if all post offices do this. I know mine does. And so I've been able to buy stuff that it says P.O. Box is not accepted. I put in the, the address of the post office and, and I get it. A P.O. box is not free. Uh, it's like 
twenty dollars a year to eighty dollars a year depending on the size of the box so again this is up to you for you to decide what you want to do here but it is required to put an address because you're going to be a real app developer there should be some customer service sort of uh, elements here email support phone number website um, this email could be for example Victor apps at yahoo.com sure you can create a free Yahoo Gmail hotmail whatever you can create a free email account put your company name on it there you go you've got a an, an email for tech support a little bit more professionally is if I had something like support at victorapps.com getting your own domain name like that however that's not free uh, that range is also in price from $2.99 a year to $20 a year but that's that looks more legitimate than Victor Apps at gmail.com. Anyone can create a gmail account, any spammer can create a gmail account. But a more legitimate company like me, I have my own domain name, and I've got that, support at victorapps.com. To get one of these domain names, you have to go to a domain provider. I'll mention a couple that I recommend. One of the big ones is GoDaddy. GoDaddy.com, you can look up their prices and such, get a .com for $3. It will, yes. All of these are introductory rates usually. What's that? That's why the ask is exactly. Always look at the fine print. Normal price is usually around twelve ninety nine a year, thirteen ninety nine, fifteen. So it is going to go up, but good introductory price. And you can get dot com, dot co, dot club, dot net. There's a bunch of dots that have been released recently. There's dot guru. There's dot arrow, there's dot XYZ, believe it or not. There's even dot ninja. So if you want to get Victor Apps dot ninja, it's available. Prices really vary. And usually there's an introductory price. GoDaddy's one company. Another one is that I would recommend that my that my company has dealt with is Bluehost. These big companies are in competition with each other. They're all going to offer you a bunch of stuff. We've all got a phone number to call. And uh, I would recommend if you're going to buy any service with any of these companies, call them instead of doing it through the website. Because when you call these people, you can give them a sad story, and they'll give you a lower price. It does work. You could say, I'm, I'm on a budget this year, and are there any deals going on? And it works. They happen to find a deal that's going on this month. It always works. Um, GoDaddy, I've done that with GoDaddy, done it with Bluehost. Another one that I would recommend is uh, hostmonster.com. Same thing. They've all got a phone number. Give them a call. Talk to a person. Get a deal. The longer you buy these, these products for, the more you save. So yes, if I buy it for $2.99 for one year, it'll probably go up to $12.99 next year. But I could buy two years at once a $2.99 each. So then I'm going to save some money. And I know, and I've been doing it, I've, I've used these three companies, because I'm pretty sure I've said it throughout the course, but if, if you don't recall, not only do I teach this stuff, I'm part of a company where we do web design, apps, photography, all that stuff. And I've dealt with all of these companies for years and years and years. And it always works out better if you talk to a person. And they managed to find a deal this month. This is two ninety nine per month, right? The other one was two ninety nine per year. Per year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah. do they tie the information? Your information? No. That's a very basic price for basic services. The more you pay, the more services you get. But no, that's not going to be private registration. So they'll tell you throughout the pages here extra add-ons, and it does add up. Now this is just 
the price per year for the name of your website. You have to then look into the domain and such, and I don't want to get too off track, but you guys can research that. GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster. All of that is in service of being a more professional developer, because then I can have here an email address that looks like that. And then I can have right here a customer support website. I can have victorapps.com slash support. You know, I need a website. Both of these that I'm showing you here are solutions that are not free. You have to pay some amount of money. Conversely, like I said, you can have victorapps at gmail.com, sure. And to get a free website, actually, you can go to wordpress.com. If you go to wordpress.com, there you will be able to get victorapps.wordpress.com. You'll get a WordPress site, pretty full featured, but the downside is that you're going to have WordPress attached to your name. I want victor.com. But if you go to the free way with WordPress, you're going to get victorapps.wordpress.com. But you will get a website that's pretty good. Um, you'll be more legitimate and um, that's um, a couple of things you can do there. As for phone number, okay, here again you can put your home number, your cell phone number, or you can get a Google Voice number. Have you heard of Google Voice? Google Voice is basically a free phone number from Google. What happens there is you go to google.com slash voice, you set up your account, and it will create, it let you pick a phone number. That phone number then is attached to a real phone, and you can then give out that phone number on your developer's account or on your business card or whatever. People can call that number and it'll automatically ring, ring your cell phone number, your home number, your fax number, whatever. Or you can set it up so that it automatically goes to your Google voicemail. So you then set up a nice voicemail message that says, Welcome to victorapps.com. Please leave a message and we'll get back to you in a timely manner. And then so people call your Google voice number. It's free. You don't pay anything. And that's just another way to to be legitimate because the more you fill these three, all three of these are optional, but if you fill these out you appear more legitimate, more trustworthy, and um, that helps your apps getting downloaded because anyone can make an app, anyone can publish an app, but not everyone is serious about it or legitimate about it. I mean since uh, we don't have to uh, fill them out now and in the last few lines, mm -hmm. we can wait until later. Yes, later. that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to fill it in. But if you can fill it in, you, you should. Yeah. And again, those those free solutions, I recommend. Get a, get a Gmail account or Yahoo, whatever. Get a Gmail, a, a Google Voice number. Get a WordPress site and then you can have those. Or invest. We saw that these companies Bluehost and such, that's not so expensive for an email and a website. Mm -hmm. The phone number still, that's the best solution about that is getting a Google Voice. I, I mean, it's, we're not sure yet what we can put in. Yeah. We can fix that later. You can fix it later. I'm going to save and continue. App distribution agreement. So there's a, there's a screen here of stuff. Oh, it doesn't look so bad. Actually, there's a scroll bar in the scroll bar here. So this is the whole agreement. You notice there is a there is a handy print to this agreement. Don't print it because it's like 40 pages long. <laughs> but uh, if you do, you can. Um, you can print it out and then uh, get a nice glass of wine, curl up in front of the fireplace, and read it. 
It goes on and on and on to tell you how you can and cannot use Amazon. It tells you about no apps with hate speech and like nudity and I don't know. You can go in and read it. And it goes in here and it tells you that you agree to the terms, what's prohibited. You may not reverse engineer, disassemble, or decompile any binary used in the connection with Amazon, including any program materials we provide you, etc., etc. Warranties, confidentiality, indemnity, basic terms, what types of apps you can sell. The royalty is you get 70% of the price of your app. It's all here. It's pretty detailed. And honestly, it's all of these contracts are always skewed toward the company rather than you. But they are saying that, you know, this is your app. It's your content. It's going to be marked with digital rights management. It's going to be encrypted so people can't steal your code. They're going to do the best they can for people not to steal your code. Things can happen, however, and somewhere here it'll say, we're not responsible, we did our best. And just going on and on, there may be geographical filtering if your app cannot be sold in certain places. Prohibited actions again and again. All of that stuff. What can you do? How, how you can survive a zombie apocalypse, I guess. That's what that's about there. Um, royalties. Again, just all of that stuff. You can read on your own. Um, but yeah, we agree to it. You can't proceed unless you agree to it. So I will click accept and continue. So I'm kind of wondering what is, I just saw like per minute rate, uh, a little bit above the minute for. Um, what was it? No. Like what was the word again? Uh, it says the rate. Like, uh, it's in the pounds. Uh, yeah, uh, that was if. Yeah. Well, this is the per minute rate, but this is. What is that anyway? Per minute rate. Uh, royalty. Oh, We reserve, we reserve the right to charge the per minute rate at any time at our discretion. Changes are here. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Somewhere here, it'll explain more about it, per minute rate. But it's down into fractions of a, of a penny. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to accept and continue. Tab number three, do you plan to monetize apps by charging for apps or selling in-app items? Yes or no? Do you plan to monetize your apps by displaying ads? Yes or no? So if we select yes for either one of these, we're going to then need to provide a bunch of important information. How would you like to get paid? Which means a bank account number routing number and all of that. I don't have any of that to do at the moment, but I can do this later. But be in mind, or keep in mind, that if you are going to make any money on your apps, you need to provide a valid bank account. I don't believe PayPal will work. This, this needs to be a real bank. And so you would need to fill this out at some point, put your account uh, routing your bank's routing number and then the number of the actual account either savings or checking personal or business and such so if you do decide to put yes on any of these you'll have to fill this out and you can't continue without it so we can edit this later because our app right now is going to be free even with paypal if you want to say for example somebody paid somebody pays you mm -hmm. you still have to provide any yes. money to be transferred <coughs> exactly to Exactly. So this is standard operating procedure. Any time you're going to get paid from any entity, you have to provide some bank information. This would not be a shock for anyone. So yeah, you're, you are going to provide some bank information so that you can get paid. I can't do it at the moment, so I'll click No. And save and continue. Uh, 
coming soon. Manifest filtering for Amazon Fire devices. Great. And click OK. So if this worked now, we're in the Amazon Developer Console, and we have all of these buttons that we'll explore right after the break. Dashboard and reporting and support and such. And at the top it says I'm logged in. Victor Campos, Victor Apps, LLC. So there we go. I'm a developer. I'm ready to sell or give away my apps on Amazon. For Android, for the Fire TV, for their tablet, for all of their services that they have. And Amazon has a big reach. And we can do it all here for free. And they actually give you incentives if you publish your apps here first instead of Google Play. Because uh, Google, uh, Amazon, again, it's not it's not the number one go-to app store on, a, on, on the usual device. Google Play is. So they're just trying to get more people on Amazon and they do have, I think I saw somewhere that, are, that it said like half a million app, no, half, half a billion apps. I, I think I saw I had like 400 million apps available or some number. But they have lots and lots of apps on, uh, on here. They're just trying to entice more people to use it because Believe it or not, they're the underdog in this space. And so we're going to look at these various screens in a moment. We're going to take a break. Just want to confirm everyone's up to this point, and then uh, we'll go on. It's 8:11. We'll be back at 8:21. We'll see what we have for this account, and then we'll publish our app and see how that goes.